Hey guys, how's it going? Tamim here from Headhunter Supplements. Welcome again to now our 14th podcast series where we not only talk about supplements, but consider health as a holistic approach so you guys can dominate. So guys, let's get straight into it. I have yet again back on the show, um, Philip from the founder and CEO of Neurotech. Hey, Philip, man. Hey, Tamim. How you going? Yeah, pretty good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, good, good. Thanks for having me on again. Keen to have a bit of a bit of a chat as usual. Yeah, likewise, man. It's always a good chat between yourself and I. So uh, just want to say thanks, man, for taking the time. I know you're quite busy um, multitasking and trying to um, run Neurotech, but thanks, man. Appreciate it. No, that's all good. I'm happy to be here. I've, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. I mean, this is what it's all about, really, for me and you, sort of spreading the word for nootropics and what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just trying to spread it across Australia. So no, yeah, happy man. to be here. Yeah, awesome, man. Great to hear. Yeah, definitely. I think nootropics is definitely a, a subject we need to be spreading across Australia, as you know, but I think we'll dive a bit into that later on in the podcast, bro. So how are you going with the coronavirus, man? I think I spoke to you about, was it about five weeks ago? We had that podcast. Yeah. Before. Yeah. How you yeah, been so, so far, like since the, yeah. I've been pretty good. I mean, throughout this entire thing, for me in particular, like my life hadn't really changed that much. I mean, yep. I still have my full-time job. We've just transitioned to like, working from home for like two days of the week. Yep, yep. So that's been a bit interesting, you know, trying to get used to working from home um, as well as, yeah, still going into the office as much as possible and then also building the business on the, on the side as well. But yeah, yeah no, it, 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 it's been good. I mean, we've been able to pump out a lot of content for the business, which has helped because a lot of people obviously been sitting at home and whatnot <laughs> yeah. and just sort of spreading the awareness of nootropics and enhance. But yeah, it's been good. I think it, restrictions started to ease. Yeah, yeah. Which is awesome, which means we can go a bit further. You know, if we want to go to the beach and oh, climb a mountain yeah. or go on a hike or yeah. something, which is, which is cool. So it'll be interesting to see like how we transition back into normal society after this. Like, is it going to be the same? I feel like it's not. I feel like it's fundamentally going to be different, which I mean, it'll be oh. interesting from a personal point of view and also from like a business standpoint, like going back oh, to yeah. normal reality. Oh, definitely, man. I'm keen as well. I think they're going to lift the restrictions, you know, in a couple of weeks or something. But yeah, I'm keen to see how it goes. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so guys, I brought Philip on the show, um, mostly to discuss, as you know, new tropics and just a bit about Neurotech because they're doing some awesome stuff on the gram. As I, as Philip mentioned, educating a lot of people on um, new tropics and providing a lot of content because I think nootropics is a topic that needs to be um, educated and uh, not many people know about it. So Philip, let's get into it, man. Um, so obviously you're the CEO and founder of Neurotech and you're, you're partnered with uh, Daniel, is it? Yeah, that's right. Daniel, my, him, myself and Daniel, we're co-founders. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Started the company back in 2017. So we've been around for a while actually, wow. which I'm not sure many people know. Yeah. Cool. So um, how did it start, man? Like, um, take us to the beginning pretty briefly. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a pretty interesting story. So as I said, yeah, we started the company back in mid-2017. So that was just as both Daniel and I were graduating from uni. So we both went to the University of Queensland, studied separate things. Um, but, yeah, we pretty much, just through our experience at university, we – we're very much into sort of experimenting with different substances and compounds like, you know, the typical smart drug type thing. So that's how we really got introduced to it. So, you know, during exam periods for like en all my engineering courses, hmm. you know, we'd be sitting, I'd be smashing it, we'd be studying 10 to 12 hours a day and, um, you know, really just experimenting with these things. And that sort of just piqued my interest and Daniel's interest as well as to like, you can take these compounds that can actually significantly improve your cognitive performance. Yep. And that was fascinating to us. So, I mean, it got us researching, Googling, like figuring out there's a whole industry around, you know, these natural versions of cognitive enhancing supplements called nootropics. Yep. And we saw that, you know, it was huge in America. There were like some pretty good companies growing there in the space, but like no one really knew about it in Australia from what I could tell. Um, and that was sort of our idea. We were like, well, why not form a company around this, around bringing products that people can use to actually aid in their cognitive performance. So initially it was sort of like the problem we were sort of solving is like, you know, there's people using 
modafinil and other potent pharmaceuticals? Why don't we bring out like a, a more natural, a more sustainable version of something like that? Yep. So that was, that was definitely how we got started. Um, and the first move we made is we applied to the iLab Accelerator, Accelerator at UQ. Wow. Cool, and that man. was like a three-month program, a bit of grant money to sort of start your startup, start your company. Yep. So, yeah, that was a pretty exciting time. You know, we started off doing like a two- to three-day pitch event where it was just pitching to judges all day for like three days straight. And man, that wow. was, yeah, that was very unnerving, you know, not, <laughs> you know, I definitely struggle with like speaking in front of a huge audience, especially back then that was so new to me. So yeah. that like was a whole, le- does. Yeah. yeah, that was a whole learning curve and man, it was, it was crazy. Like the ideas some people were pitching were just incredible. So yeah, we actually got through, got through into the accelerator program, which we were honestly a bit shocked about because some of the other people who were coming, going up against were just doing all these crazy radical ideas, whereas we were just doing these like nootropic <laughs> supplements. But I think because, you know, the industry was so new here, it it sort of made sense. There was a bit of a market gap and also just the practicality of what we wanted to do. Like we could bring a product to market pretty quickly and iterate from there. I think that was very appealing. And yeah, we got in and that started sort of our journey. Awesome. Sounds good, man. Yeah. Um, just back to the Neurotech, um, Philip. So, what would you say your main mission is? Like, um, obviously, yeah. I'll just let you. What, was, what, what would you say your main mission is in Neurotech? Yeah. So yeah. that's definitely evolved and changed over the past few years. Um, as I said initially, it was sort of about creating a more sustainable solution to sort of, you know, the uni students who were taking all the smart drugs and ph- potent pharmaceuticals and whatnot. Mm. So that was probably what we were wanting to do in the beginning. But it's sort of now changed to providing solutions for the modern day human to help them in all different aspects. Because what we found is there's just so, like, so many aspects of our lives are impacted by our brain performance and our brain health. You know, you can see that neurodegeneration is on the rise due to aging, disease, and lifestyle factors. You can see that productivity innovation, creativity are all being rewarded more than ever. Yep. You can see that, you know, stress, anxiety, and depression are rampant um, due to the modern lives we lead. So it's like all these come back to the brain and that means we can do something about it. We can create products which, you know, help people in all these avenues. And there's the yep. research out there to suggest that some of these natural compounds that we're, that we're fascinated by can actually help with, with all these aspects. So it's, for us right now, it's like systematically targeting each problem, you know, yep. the problem of brain health and memory. Let's target that. The problem of yep. focus and productivity. Let's target that. The problem of stress, anxiety, uh, I'm not getting good quality sleep. Let's target that. Yep. So that's really the angle that we're coming out, coming from now. Yep. Um, just creating solutions. Yeah. For the modern day humor. That's sort of, that's sort of how we see it. That's cool, man. So you're pretty much just trying to help people succeed um, by kind of, biohacking their own um, neurochemistry in their brain exactly right like to me it the brain is definitely like our most important asset and yeah, definitely it's what makes us us it's what makes us human and it's like if we can support that in any po- in any possible way then that's yeah. something i'm definitely fascinated by and something i want to be a part of yeah that sounds cool man that sounds awesome exactly what we do as well philip um it's pretty um i uh, surprised that you got into nootropics in uni. Um, yeah, yeah, that's quite early. Like for me, um, I, I only ever started using caffeine towards maybe the third the third year of uni. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I wasn't really a coffee drinker, but I guess I guess caffeine is a nootropic. It's like one of the, the gateway nootropics that leads to so many other things. But I was like yeah. you as well. I did experience some of my uni mates used like nodos have you heard of nodos like um, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah did you get the same as well like there's people using nodos yeah definitely definitely not a lot of people who use that i've no actually personally yeah. used nodos myself but yeah and um yeah just, they're just high caffeine tablets i think and then oh, you get those people that use like the artificial uh ritalin and all that kind of stuff and you get your modafinil people as well but it's crazy yeah. what like the, the pressures that uni put you under that you just need to like kind of damage yourself temporarily to get you know what i mean the scores and passes and stuff i think i had a story philip that my mm-hmm. mate he kind of 
was taking, I don't know what he was taking for one week straight. I think it was Ritalin. It was leading yeah. up to his um, thesis submission. And man, he was taking this shit every day for about seven, seven days, I think. And man, he yeah. passed out at the end. And he was just like, I think he couldn't even walk. He had to, his, his parents needed to pick him up, take him home. Like, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. So it's, it's great that there is a company like Neurotech that are providing an alternative solution to like uni students, and not just uni students, but I think for like entrepreneurs like yourself um, and just like that working class and all that kind of stuff and just healthy people that just want to optimize their brain health. So that's cool, man. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, you're, you're totally right. I mean, Ritalin and Modafinil and whatnot, uh, they're, they're potent substances and like they can be a tool you can use, but you have to be mindful. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know how it's going to affect your body. And it's just, ultimately, it's not a sustainable solution. Oh, definitely you know what not. I mean? So that, that's not, why, yeah. like if we can provide something which people can take often and it causes little to no side effects, in fact, you know, it improves your brain in the long term, then then that's perfect. That's that's what we're trying to do here, yeah. really. Definitely, man. And um, just on the, the smart drugs and stuff, I really liked your post, Philip, the other day, how you were comparing, uh, I think it was nootropics to smart drugs. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we yeah. made a video about that, sort of comparing the two, sort of putting more education around that. Because I think a lot of people, like, get into nootropics from smart drugs, which is what I did and what a lot of people do, you know. So they yeah. assume that, you know, all nootropics are almost like these crazy, harsh, smart drugs with all these crazy, harsh side effects. Yeah, and it's definitely. not necessarily the case at all. Yeah. So I'm just trying to, you know, ed- I guess educate the Australian market in particular on like what what is the difference because there is definitely a clear difference. Yeah, and to definitely. not really get them confused with one another and just to like show people that everything can be a tool and you just really have to educate yourself in the right way. Yeah, definitely, man, definitely. It's funny how you some guys start off with the smart drugs, then slowly transition to the nootropics. Like, I was actually the opposite. I went in through the back door, so to speak. Um, yeah. Started with the na- natural nootropics, like your um, your alpha GPC, all that kind of stuff. And then I, I've, I've only ever tried modafinil once. Yeah. Um, and I stacked it with caffeine and I think L-theanine. Mm, yeah, yeah but it was it was pretty good man like it gave me like a nice euphoric feeling that i was happy to finish my work but what you did mention on your post that it gives you a kind of linear thinking like you can just you just get engulfed in one topic and you just keep trying to dig 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 deep uh sorry dig deeper and your creativity kind of gets diminished that, that that's correct right phil is that what you were trying to i think that was the discussion about that on the instagram post um yeah 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 that's definitely a big part of it i think like if it really depends on like what you're trying to achieve like if you're studying and you know what you need to study and it's very straightforward and you just need to yeah. focus hard then yeah. it can help you a lot but like if so for example right now like i need to think laterally you know what i mean we're trying to think of creative yeah. problems we're trying yep. to think of marketing problems mm with our business and life, like taking a product like that or a smart drug isn't really going to help me. <laughs> like I haven't, and I haven't taken it since university because I just yeah. haven't felt the need. It just would not help me with, you know, what I'm working on right now. Mm. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, definitely. Yeah, man. Sorry. Just about modafinil. Yeah, man. Um, it gives you that nice linear thinking as well, but man, it just, you get a bit of side effects as well. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep that night and it actually affected me the next day. Like I was tired. Um, did you get the same thing, Philip? When you take modafinil, it gets, it gives you, it just excites you, and you just can't sleep. Oh yeah, man. Well, <laughs> yeah. The biggest things I got were like irritability, like stomach irritability, oh, loss of appetite. So I just, which yeah, I just would not be able to eat at all during the day. And then yeah, yeah, because we were taking it for days on end, by the end of that period, your body would just crash. And I remember just sleeping for days on end. Wow. <laughs> it's just yeah. And yeah, yeah obviously, like if, if you're taking it, you're going to struggle to sleep that night as well, probably. Yeah, it's definitely not worth it, I think, Philip, in the, in the long term, because you do get that five hours of work done, whatever, but then you have to kind of um, deal with the consequences later. As you said, lack of sleep, um, tired, digestive issues, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. That's so, right. Yeah. Yeah. Philip, let's get into nootropics, man. So, how would you define a nootropic? And how would you define a smart drug? Because funny enough, I was listening to the ATP podcast. Do you listen to that much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a few of those. I, I love I love that podcast. Yeah, good good podcast. But 
the guy, the main guy, I don't even know his name. He he said he defined a nootropic as a smart drug. <laughs> Interesting. I yeah, think. Like- I think maybe people use the terms interchangeably just to draw more attention to it. I don't know. I, I feel like that's what people are doing, just so people can get more viewers, essentially. But, but I, isn't that what isn't? Doesn't that create like an issue for us that are trying to educate people on all these natural nootropics, and then you you have some people that are kind of associating nootropics with smart drugs, and that's where you get that limitless pill kind of mentality that you you're speaking about. Yeah, I think I think that does definitely present an issue. I think they should be seen as two completely separate categories. I mean, yeah. smart drugs, yes, they can improve cognitive performance significantly in the short term, yeah. but yeah. they can lead to harsh side effects. They can lead to downregulation of certain endogenous processes yeah. over time, um, and they're just not sustainable. They're, they're created to you know treat, cure, or prevent disease or illness or certain symptoms. Whereas yep. that's with natural compounds, that's not really what they're made for or their mm-hmm. purpose. And with a lot of natural nootropics, for example, yep. by definition, they have little to no side effects. They should be non-toxic and they should actually be neuroprotective. So they can definitely more sustainably increase you know, cognitive performance over the long term with little mm-hmm. to no side effects. Whereas that's, I don't think that's the case at all with you know those potent smart drugs. Yeah. And Philip, um, so yeah, you did mention that nootropics, I think they're categorized. I think there's five topics. It needs, as you said, it needs to be neuroprotective. It needs to be um, safe with no side effects. And I think there's a a couple more, which are like obviously enhanced memory and kind of um, trigger certain neurotransmitters in the brain, all that kind of stuff. Is there anything you would add to that definition? Um, No, I think that pretty much covers it. I would say... Any compound which can affect some sort of aspect of cognitive function, whether that's memory, focus, creativity, yeah. Whilst yeah, yeah. yeah, being neuroprotective, being non-toxic, and causing little to no side effects. Yeah, cool, man. That's cool. Yeah, that's 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 spot on. And yeah. Phil, just want to talk about more of the smart drugs, man. Just want to spread that awareness um, with our viewers. Um, so natural nootropics, as you know, you can you can purchase them from stores, you can purchase them from vendors like yourself. But smart drugs, man, it's it's a pretty dodgy industry, eh? Like you just purchase a pill of someone that you don't know, and, and it's like wrapped up. I, I don't know. I don't even know how you get um, modafinil. Uh, I was just it was actually given to me by a friend. Um, obviously, being myself, I assessed the foil, uh, looked up the brand and all that kind of stuff. But don't yeah. you think it pre- like possesses a kind of risk or a safety kind of concern when people are do are buying these safe drugs off Definite. the streets or yeah yeah definitely because most people who are using it like to study or recreationally they're not they don't have a prescription typically so they're looking at yeah. online vendors from you know i think most of them are from like india these online suppliers of yeah. these smart drugs and then it's like then it comes into question like how do you know it's safe how do you know what you're taking really and yeah that yeah. that raises a whole other issue yeah, definitely. Yeah, especially when you're playing with your brain chemistry, you just don't want to be putting any white pill that you buy online. So yeah, precisely. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Um, all right, Phil. Just let's talk about kind of natural nootropics. So, what's some examples? What's some common examples of natural nootropics? Just to give people like shine a light on these kind of herbs or whatever it might be, because people might encounter them on a daily basis, but not know that they're nootropics. And when they do hear the term nootropics, oh, what's a nootropic? It's right in front of you. Like it's right under your nose. So what's some common examples then of some natural nootropics? Yeah. So there are definitely many different forms, I guess, of natural nootropics. You know, they can come in the form of certain vitamins and minerals. They can come from certain food sources. Um, yep. They can be herbal extracts and herbs, such as, you know, Bacopa monnieri is a very popular one. Um, yeah, cool. And even medicinal mushrooms, that's becoming a big thing. They, there's a few nootropics there, such as lion's mane mushroom. It can act as a nootropic. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of different places in nature and in food where nootropics are found. Yeah, man. So even things like L-tyrosine, for example, that's found in, in food sources, but you can also supplement it as a nootropic because it seems to have nootropic effects. Yep. And it's also a building block for, you know, dopamine. Definitely, definitely. Hey, Phil, so if does a nootropic that someone chooses that's natural, of course, have to abide by those five kind of nootropic definitions that we spoke about? Or can they? Can we just 
can it fulfill only two but still be called a nootropic? Do you know much that's, about that? Yeah, yeah it's kind of a yeah, hard one. Interesting kind question. of a gray area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think most natural nootropics that you'll find and you can buy pretty much will cover all those, you know, parameters. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think we I think feel as we go on and there's more studies on compounds, they slowly become nootropics over time. Like yeah. I was listening to the ATP, they were talking about creatine. So as more studies come out, it it shows that it I think it triggers acetylcholine uh, neurotransmitter, all that kind of stuff. So it's slowly becoming a neuro a nootropic, man. You never know. In ten years, every compound might be considered considered a nootropic. I think it's just the studies that need to go into it to prove that it has those five characteristics. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. I think yeah. the research is still very early on a lot of these compounds, and that's something I'd love to see more of. You know, more yeah, research definitely. going into these because yeah, a lot of compounds can affect the brain in some form. It's just I guess mm. to which degree, and yeah, can it yeah. be beneficial? And can we find a way to use it that'll actually help us improve our brain performance? Yeah. But yeah, yeah I would love to see more research around them. Yeah, same, same here. Um, but I think with the herbs, um, feel they're well defined as nootropics because, as you know, they've been around for centuries. Like, um, yeah, I think yeah. So they have heaps of studies. So I guess yeah, with herbs, it's much easier to classify them as nootropics, man. So yeah, that's, yeah. That's I right. think I think the term nootropic came about in 1972. I just did some background information. I think the first one is pyracetam. Yeah. Um, so that yeah. was the first ever nootropic which was synthesized yeah romanian chemist corneliu i believe his name was cool man yeah yeah i've I've actually i have actually played around with some race terms like paracetam oxyracetam yeah there seems to be a lot of variability with like whether or not people get positive results from them um i would take some with my coffee every now and again i didn't notice any great effect to be honest yeah and obviously you know that we can't actually legally supply recetams in australia so we have to stick to more of like your natural herbs yeah definitely when i started uh two years ago feel like i think three years ago um trialing nootropics uh one of the first ones i purchased was nupept <laughs> i don't yeah. know yeah i don't know if it's considered as a race tam but it's kind of a gray area because it's such a new nootropic but i remember taking it the first time and mm-hmm. it just like my eyes were just like beaming and I was just like <laughs> on an extreme caffeine hit slash high slash energetic. I don't know what it was. And then I was just smashing out my work, but it was very like fast paced work. Like yeah, I was flicking the book at like a hundred miles per hour. Um, like literally that's, that's, the, that's the story. And, and then after that, man, it didn't really affect me that much. Like the first time it hit me hard, but after that, and like you, I was trialing out with the uh, oxyracetam and I was yeah. just stacking different stuff, like obviously uh, CDB choline and hypozyne. And I was trialing them out both study and at the gym. And mm-hmm. I, I got a bit of good focus actually from oxyracetam mixing with caffeine, similar to yourself. So yep. yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting, man. Um, all these new compounds that are coming out. Yeah, it is. I, I've, I've experimented with new pept as well a bit. Um, it's yep. pretty easy to just add onto like a coffee, as you said. But yeah, I think there just definitely needs to be more research around these things, because um, yeah. they can have pretty great potential. Yeah, definitely. A cool, cool fact, man. Did you know, like Nupep, the bioavailability is great, uh, greatest through the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's not that's not that surprising, I guess. And people people also like to take it sublingually as well. Yeah, yeah. So under the, under the tongue, that's a pretty good route, route of administration because of all the blood vessels. Yeah. It absorbs yeah. quite easily. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Um, so, Philip, let's just move on now. Um, so let's talk about, like, administering the perfect nootropic for someone. So mm. um, like me and yourself, I think, like, trial and error is the best way. Yeah. But if you – if we're speaking to – an audience member who doesn't know about nootropics, I'm sure they have if they do listen to these podcasts and yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, What would you give as advice to picking the best nootropics for them and their lifestyle? Yeah, so this is an interesting question and there's a few ways to go about it. I think the first thing people should be doing is looking to fix any deficiencies they may have like in their diet. And supplementing with that, because that's going to yield the greatest results, obviously. So 
off the top of my head, an example I could think of is if, for example, you're a vegan, yep. you might struggle to get choline in your diet because choline is present um, in high amounts in foods such as eggs and meats. Yep. So, you know, then you might deduce it might be wise to supplement with the source of choline, whether that's alpha GPC, CDB choline, um, or maybe even choline, choline by tartrate, but I don't really swear by that <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I, think I don't know how fe- effective it is why, but I th- yeah. yeah i think if you can find a way to f- like figure out if you're deficient in anything mm. or if you're missing anything in your diet then to first supplement with that um after yeah. that then i'd really be looking at you know what problems do you have that you're trying to, to solve don't just throw supplements and all these nootropics and ingredients into your life without having like a purpose. Like, are you struggling with your sleep or are you struggling to focus or are you struggling with memory and then taking specific ingredients to solve those problems? So I think, I think for beginners, it's probably wiser to start off with just one ingredient at a time. So introducing one nootropic at a time, seeing how that affects you and then moving on to, you know, maybe multiple nootropics or maybe a stack like we provide a stack with multiple ingredients so maybe that's not the best thing to start off with yep but really to get introduction i would start off with yeah an ingredient which solves a problem which you're having and then looking at implementing a variety of ingredients or looking at some of these pre-made stacks that we have and that a bunch of other companies have yep yep definitely definitely yeah man you're right uh hit the nail on the head i definitely liked what you said about getting your bases covered so a lot of people jump into new tropics without getting even the fundamentals right like such as diet high quality diet and even sleep man like they're using all these high quality herbs adaptogens whatever and they're not even getting a good amount of sleep um, even though there has been studies to show um, it does fight fatigue when you sleep deprived but it's just getting yeah. the fundamentals right right phil yeah absolutely man yeah. um and yeah, there's, there's a lot of companies providing these like all-in-one stacks, which target every aspect yep. of brain health and performance. And it's just like, not entirely sure I agree with it um, as yep. we're trying to focus on brain health and memory and then sort of mm. separate different products for different purposes and for solving different yep. problems that you may have. Yep. Um, yep. Definitely. And yeah. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned, Phil, I think someone needs to be uh, self-aware enough of their state to know what new tropics they need. I think that comes at a higher level kind of self-awareness um, state where you just like can sense how your body is reacting to certain situations and how your brain, it's, it's a very complex um, uh, situ- scenario, but I was talking to actually listen, it's, it was, it's very hard to know um, which tra- uh, neurotransmissions you're deficient in all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, yeah yeah and i think atp i was listening to one of their podcasts they mentioned there's certain signs like for example acetylcholine which is i think um responsible for memory and concentration and creativity is that is that correct phil yeah that's correct yep yeah um i think if you're deficient in it um you start to get tingly feet like there's like certain certain kind of signs and stuff that people might be able to tell what new tropics they can use but it's it's kind of hard to know um, neurotransmitter and brain activity to kind of um, tailor stack for yourself, like in your brain chemistry. Yeah, yeah, it is difficult because it's yeah, as you said, it's not as simple as just like getting a blood test and saying you're seeing that you're deficient in like X Y Z vitamins and minerals. Um, yep, yep. It's hard to tell whether or not you're deficient um, in certain neurotransmitters. Yep. I know there's some like tests and surveys out there which can sort mm. of which sort of look at your symptoms and potentially yeah. say that, you know, um, you might be low in this neurotransmitter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice if there was a easy way to measure it and actually test yeah. it, but it's difficult because the concentrations and everything's changing so rapidly in the brain. Yeah. It's hard to, ver- it's hard to really pinpoint that. Yeah, definitely. I think it just comes down to Philip being self-aware and kind of, doing your own research and just a bit of testing as well and, and journaling your progress through certain supplements and compounds. Um, and what you mentioned as well, just kind of isolate a new tropic and just kind of 
stick it the way through or six to 12 weeks and see how you go. But um, yeah, and just, just yeah. what you spoke about the neurotransmitters, I've actually completed a quiz. I don't know how accurate it is, but it's like a personality quiz. It's called the Braverman test. Have you heard of it? Yeah, yeah, I have heard of that. Um, Dr. Eric Braverman. Yeah. Have yeah. you tried it yourself? I have not. I'm still a bit. I'm still a bit skeptical as to the accuracy yeah. of it, but I think it seems to be a good starting point, or as best as we have for now. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, doing something like that, I think, would be a good starting point for sort of the whole personalization side of things. So actually, personalizing yeah. nootropics to you and your lifestyle. Yeah. I think it's a good starting point for seeing, you know, whether, you know, you're maybe lacking in certain neurotransmitters. Yeah, definitely. Well, I did it myself and I thought it was pretty spot on. Like I found that, that I was d- dopamine dominant Yeah, and that make that makes sense because I am the type of person that gets extreme pleasure from a reward. Um, yep. and I think it, it causes a lot of anxiety if you do have high dopamine levels as well. So I tend to get anxious cause I'm always living in the future rather than the present compared to a person that's acetyl or choline, acetyl choline, um, dominant where they're more happy i think that was serotonin or acetylcholine would dominant that they were happy in the present and um yeah 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 i know exactly what i mean i'm similar <laughs> where always just like thinking about the future and struggling to be yeah. in the present i think yeah like you bring up dopamine i think that's an interesting one um i think maybe like modern society i think a lot of us probably dopamine deficient okay yeah I'll, I can I can explain that a bit further. Um, is that think, is that environmental reasons or is it just genetics? I think yeah, I think lifestyle and environmental. I think with the modern lives we lead, um, the convenience yeah. of everything, um, fast right. food, um, pornography, video games, social yeah. media, we're sort of hijacking our reward circuit mm. and making it way too easy to get these little little hits of dopamine all the time. Okay. And yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I think over a long period of time that might make it harder for us to you know be motivated to achieve these goals which we set for ourselves, where we get these big dopamine hits because we're just you know every single day we're getting all these hits from social media, and you know it's causing us to feel bad about ourselves, to be distracted. And yeah, I'm interested yeah. to see how this all plays out in the future. Oh yeah, definitely you're right. But Phil, does that necessarily mean someone's dopamine deficient, or are they dopamine insensitive, as in like? Their dopamine's working correctly. They have excess amount, but because of the environmental factors, we not we might not be as sensitive to that neurotransmitter. Or yeah, I think, think? It, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's, it's probably one. Yeah, it's yeah. probably a mixture of both. I mean, I just yeah. think, yeah, the way we're living our lives, we're sort of we're literally short circuiting that evolutionary reward pathway, and it's probably going to affect us in the long term. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see where it takes us, man. Like with all this, everything's at the click of our on the finger our fingertips, and like you know, what I mean, we can order pizza and have it here in five minutes, and you know, what I mean, we can listen listen to our favorite song in one second. So it yeah. is definitely affecting our brain, especially the p- pornography these days with males um, and some females as well. But um, yeah, yeah, man, uh, excited to see where it goes. Um, yeah. So Phil. Um, what would you so for someone listening? Mm-hmm. What what's the top three reasons you'll give um, to someone to try new tropics? So what was what's the main reasons? Um, I would say the top reason is as a form of sort of preventative treatment. A lot of a lot of the research and a lot of these nootropics are actually studied in people you know with cognitive decline or neurodegeneration due to disease. I think yeah. you know by taking these compounds, if you can stave that off a little bit longer. Or, yep. you know what I mean? I think that's a huge thing mm. because I think neuro, neurodegenerative diseases, they're just awful and I don't ever want to get that and it seems to be mm. on the rise. So I think taking yeah. nootropics is a sort of preventative solution yep, um, and to sort of stave that off as much as possible and keep your brain as healthy as possible, I think that's probably the top reason. Um, okay. And after that, of course, I would be taking it to improve my brain's performance like it's not maybe it's not going to like significantly make, it's not going to make you superman you know what i mean but it might help yeah. five ten percent in a, in a certain aspect you know yeah, and really definitely. depending on what you're looking for like whether that's crap i need to focus more during the day or crap i'm stressed out and anxious then nootropics yeah. are a good solution 
you should also look at um, other lifestyle solutions. You know, uh, nootropics aren't a be all and end all. I think they can work synergistically with other lifestyle interventions, you know, whether that's yeah. exercise, whether that's meditation. I think we should be mm. looking at all these things to sort of keep us healthy in the long term yeah. and you know, keep our brains healthy and happy. That's really what the goal is here. Oh, definitely, man. I think it's a holistic approach, Phil, um, just getting all those fundamentals right and then using nootropics as a um, icing to the cake kind of approach. Yeah, that's right. If you've got everything else dialed in, then yeah. taking nootropics is just going to help that little bit more and it's going to make you even better. It's going to help you show up as a better person every single day. Yeah, definitely, man, definitely. And I think now in the modern society, everyone's a bit stressed and everyone is trying to get maximum efficiency um, out of a minimum Im- input. So I definitely think nootropics is the way to go. So awesome, Phil. Excited. So what's your uh, top nootropics that you use um, that you've had the most success with that works best on you? Oh, my top nootropics. It's a hard so one. <laughs> obviously, my product enhance. <laughs> oh, cool. Of course. Um, of course. So that's the only, I guess, nootropic I'm taking currently um, consistently. Yeah. So enhance is obviously a stack with a bunch of different ingredients. We'll go into that later. I'm taking that yeah. now at the moment um, yeah. to support brain health and memory. Yeah. Besides, Actually, so let's, just get, let's just jump into it now. Like, let's talk about Enhance, man, while we're on the topic. Yeah, may as well. So yeah, Enhance, yeah. we have nine ingredients. So I'll go through the ingredients. I'll just briefly list them. Bacopa monnieri, lion's mane mushroom, um, CDP choline, sharp PS phosphatidyl serine, neurofactor coffee fruit extract, um, actiolin, B vitamins, and cell charge. Yeah. So we really just put together the best ingredients we could find for overall brain health, um, memory, learning, and neuroprotection. So it's really like the way I think of it is like the basis for for good brain health and performance. Yep. Yep. And for keeping your brain healthy in the long term, it's not going to give you that huge focus energy hit because it's stimulant free. We have no caffeine, no stimulants in there. Yeah. Awesome. So this is something you'd take daily or, or almost daily to you know, as I said, keep your brain healthy in the long term yep. and then build from there. But um, besides enhance, um, something I love, I used to do a lot of is just take like L-theanine by itself and just adding it to, you know, my coffees and whatnot. I think L-theanine is a great compound. Man, it's the best. Yeah. One of the best. Yeah. Yeah. So um, besides that, I'm taking also some of these mushroom extracts. By just, company. just to rewind, Phil, so where do you buy your l theanine from? Do you, do oh, you have a specific yeah, so vendor? Or? Yeah, so I typically get all my products from and nootropics from Nootropics Depot. Oh, same. Yeah, I yeah, love I them. Think, they're I awesome, think, man. Yeah, they're a pretty good supplier. I mean, they have a load of different good quality yeah. nootropics in there. And iHerb as yeah. well seems to be pretty okay. good. Cool. Yep, yep. So if you're looking for individual nootropic ingredients, I'd definitely check out those two. Um, yep. But then, yeah, if you're looking for a stack, we'd check out enhance and other companies creating good stacks yeah awesome man awesome man i really like your enhance for me i like how it covers all bases it uses most of these natural nootropics that i think people that are new to nootropics actually try themselves yeah so i think everyone that that uses nootropics always starts with the bacopa always hears of the lion's mane because because uh, i think lion's mane is one of the most a widely spoken about nootropic because you see it you see it everywhere um and it's kind of cool it looks cool as well have you seen it it's like yeah it, it literally cool. looks like a brain if you cut it in half yeah but yeah, yeah. lion's Where mane has you... definitely surged in popularity it's an interesting one um its effect on um nerve growth factor which is a yeah, protein right. which supports and repairs neurons so they've pretty there's pretty good research particularly within like rat models i would love to see more in yeah. um humans um yeah. but overall looks super promising as sort of a neuroprotective compound. There also yep. seems to be an effect that it has on um, sleep, in particular REM yeah, sleep. exactly. I take it before sleep um, just to apparently it enhances your um, your dream, like you see more vivid dreams or something Yeah, yeah, like that. that's right. Yeah, yeah, so it definitely enhances REM sleep, so you get crazy dreams, and I've experienced that wow. just anecdotally myself with like this mushroom extract tincture that I've been using. When I have okay. lion's mane at night, my dreams are just out of this world so um phil so you said new enhance is a daily nootropic i think not many nootropics are daily which is what's what's pretty good about your your product um, yeah so you use it in the morning or is it best at night or so personally i use mine every morning i take two capsules a day with my greens just for convenience 
I recommend taking it with food or a fat source just to increase the absorption and reduce any chance of stomach upset because some some of these herbal yeah. extracts like bacopa can actually um, make your tummy feel a bit not great, but that oh. only happens in a very small percentage of users. So some of our customers are, I think, experimenting with using it at night or potentially yeah. even like one capsule in the morning, one capsule at night. Yeah, I yeah. haven't experimented too much with that yet. Um, I probably will. I'll probably give it a shot. But right now, yeah, it's just two capsules every morning with my greens or yeah. with the coffee. Yeah. I think it's best to just get it in one hit, man. I've read a lot of research and, and Reddit forums that nootropics are the best to just hit them in the morning. But there is exceptions, yeah. of course. It's just like comes down to personal preference um, and all that kind of stuff. Convenience, obviously. But yeah, man, I just that's interesting that um, most of these herbs do cause tummy upset, like even my rhodiola. Um, I, I get some people that get uh, upset stomachs. Like yeah. Even myself, man, when I take it in the morning, because some of the studies feel they they do say it's best taken in the morning on an empty stomach. I don't know right. why. Yeah, it's just weird. And some Reddit forums and even doctors recommend to take these on an empty stomach, but it does cause stomach upset a lot. So I uh, definitely try to mix it with a smoothie or or take it with a coffee after I've had like the first meal of the day or or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, a lot of like the herbs are like fat soluble, so they yeah. do dissolve a bit easier with when you take it with fat, and they do it should yeah. help with the absorption as well. So um, yeah, I would probably recommend yeah. it with food, but I guess it depends yeah. exactly on the product or ingredient you're looking at for sure. Um, I want to tell you a funny story, um, Phil. When I first yeah. started, um, do you want to hear it? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's go, man. Um, when I first started mucking around with herbs like nootropics, I made like a. I used it at work. I wanted to see how um, it would affect me, like my performance. So yeah. I mixed a whole bag of uh, Bacopa, I think it was, Ginkgo, St. John's Wort, um, CDP Choline, Hoopazine. Um, and I just, I, without knowing that it would, it would taste like shit, <laughs> I, put it, I put a scoop in water yeah, and I, and I mixed it and I took a sip and, oh, man, let me tell you. Um, and I spewed up straight away. So, oh, uh, no. Yeah, and I had to be sent home, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't surprise me. You open up some of these ingredients when it's just like in a powder yeah. form and you can just smell it. Like, they are potent. Yeah, yeah definitely. They're, they're super bitter. They can be quite bitter at times. But that's why I had to put some of them in capsules, especially like St. John's Wort and stuff. So, yeah, Yeah, man. that's right. That's why it's, yeah, it's definitely good to encapsulate <laughs> a lot of these. They can be pretty rough. Yeah, definitely, man, definitely. Um, so man, let's, we spoke about definitely, like, I do like to talk of, I've just noticed a lot of people that are into nootropics, are uh, into self-development as well. Cause I think using nootropics, you do want to get nat- you do naturally want to get to that peak performance. And I feel that self-development is kind of tied in, in a certain way. Um, I think, yeah. yeah. Would you agree, Phil? Um, absolutely, man. Absolutely yeah, agree. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about like self-development. Like obviously, I see you on the gram reading a lot of books and all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, you have your own podcast. Um, so, man, let's talk about like your favorite books. Like, what do you try to read? Like, um, any self development? Um, yeah, if you can share. Yeah. So, in terms of self development books, I read a few of them, but that's not yeah. probably my most read or the topic I find most interesting. Um, yeah. I get a lot of my self development stuff from you know online sources and YouTube videos and podcasts. Mm. Um, yep. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of books I read are either centered around sort of like business and startups or oh, definitely. sort of the whole field of like um, human enhancement, you know, looking at different yep. technologies and different products to yep. improve human performance, human health, human longevity. Yep, yep. So one I'm reading right now actually is called The Neuro Generation by yep. Tan Lee. And it's yep. actually from the CEO of Emotive. And Emotive is like an EEG company. Um, wow a brain computer interface company in the U S um, and she's actually from Australia, which is fascinating. But yeah, this book is awesome. Wow. It, it starts off talking about nootropics actually, and mentions a few nootropic companies and ingredients. And yeah. then it goes on to talk about other brain enhancing technologies and brain computer interfaces. Cool, and sort man. of the research being done right now. So like, That's awesome. yeah, it's just an awesome, awesome book on yeah. neurotechnology and neuroscience. But, just yeah. on that um, topic, Phil, I sorry to yeah. cut you off, but um I think you mentioned uh, interfaces with the brain. Did you listen to that uh, Joe Rogan podcast with Elon Musk just recently? I did. I absolutely did. Yeah. 
how crazy was that? Eh? He's they're making a new um, I think what is it called? Neuro something? Neuro. Uh, a neural lace. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, they did the first announcement mid last year. Actually, they work. Yeah. They were working on like in sort of in secret, I guess, for two years, trying to develop this new technology and wow. unveiled it last year, and it's just yeah, blown people away. It's incredible. That's crazy. Do you think that could possibly possibly be the like the future of nootropics? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say it's the future of nootropics. It's the future yep. of brain enhancement. That's for sure. I think nootropics. Oh, yep, yep. I see nootropics as sort of the first step. Yep, you know, yep. that the first step to getting people into looking at improving their cognitive performance. Yep. And then I think there's a lot of innovation that can happen with nootropics and supplements as well. And then. Yeah, I think eventually for when we're going to the future, we're going to be looking at these other brain technologies and neural technologies, yeah. which are really going to change the game. I think they're going to make massive, yeah. massive impact. Yeah, it's interesting, man. So what I'm hearing from you, Philip, is that you just like to immerse yourself in pretty much everything business, uh, tech related, and just learning more about like brain optimization. So obviously you can feed into the business. And that's help right. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. So just on the topic of podcast, Philip, I know you have your own, uh, which is mm-hmm. cool, man. Keep going. Love it. Um, I actually watched the one with um, the Shine CEO recently. So that was cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a great yeah. episode Daniel did. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what podcasts you listen to? Any um, any good podcasts out there that you... Yeah, so that, <laughs> there's a few. That's pretty much all I watch on um, YouTube and listen to. Um, so the first one, obviously, Joe Reagan podcast. Just because yeah. the versatility of the guests he has, like Dr. Rhonda Patrick, a yeah. yeah. bunch of other interesting guests. Um, yeah. Aubrey Marcus podcast, that's that's a bit more of like spirituality yeah. side of things. Um, yeah. Talks a lot about psychedelics and other substances, which is fascinating right. to me as well. Um, yeah, awesome. um, Tom Bilyeu and Impact Theory, that's another one. Okay, cool. So yeah, Tom is the um, was the founder of Quest Nutrition, like the Quest Bars. Yeah, so he has a podcast now as well with this new company, Impact Theory. And man, cool. they, they interview some great, great guests, some awesome, like a neuroscientist. Wow. So I love his podcast. Yeah, um, I've got to check it some, out. Yeah, man, absolutely check it out. What are some other ones I like? Uh, uh, yeah, I would say also like the HVMN podcast. So they're like a, they're like a, yeah, yeah, the Keto Nootropics guys, they're a company based in the US. They do some good ones as well, but uh, they would probably be my yeah, cool. main ones. Um, That's cool, man. Yeah. I like how you, yeah, as I said, immerse yourself in all this, all this stuff, constantly, constantly learning. So, yeah, you can better yourself and the business. So that's cool, man. That's cool. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right, man. Um, let's kind of um, wrap it up, Phil. Um, so let's summarize Nootropics pretty much. Um, you want to just give a quick summary of nootropics feel and like why people should use them and um... yeah I mean this is this is how I try to break it down for people right yeah. um, so we have health supplements we have sports supplements you know wants to improve general health wants to improve physical performance uh, nootropics are sort of this this new wave I, I guess you can say of compounds natural compounds we can take to improve our cognitive performance so you know we all struggle day to day with different aspects of our brain. Yep. We're too stressed. We're not focused enough. Um, we can look at nootropics as one of these interventions and one of these ways to really support our brain in the long term. Yep. Um, and I think it just has, I think it has massive value. I think our, we're going to be looking at our brain health more. It's going to become more and more important as we continue on into the world of the future. We're going to be looking yep. to get ahead to stay on top of tasks and yeah, really just optimize ourselves to be better humans each and every day i think nootropics are just one easy great way to do that yep yep yeah awesome what um good words phil um there you go do you guys have it words from the man himself um philip all right phil uh, let's talk man i think yeah we last time we spoke we had a you, you were starting like an awesome kind of working from home package all that kind of stuff how's how's that going and and stuff how's yeah so we announced uh, what we call the Enhanced Working From Home subscription. Yep. Um, so that was sort of our way of giving back in terms of, you know, those people working from home, trying to be productive, you know, whether that was still trying to do their jobs, whether they're trying to build a side hustle, whether they're trying to learn yep. some new skills. We wanted to help people be productive and focused at home. Um, and we thought, you know, that partnering with other companies as well would be a great way to do that. And 
bringing all these products together, which can help people improve their brains whilst they're at home. Yep. Would be awesome. So yeah, we partnered with Head Honcho, you guys. We partnered with iRise Drink, Savvy Beverages, and Barclay Eyewear. And yeah, we're sort of cool, giving, man. yeah, we're giving this package for like, we're giving just as much value as we can to help people optimize their performance day in, day out. You know what I mean? So yep. with the working from home package, if you sign up, you get enhanced for 50% off for your first month. Yep. And then also discounts on four other partner brands, as I said, um, cool. as well as a working from home ebook and an invitation to our private Facebook group. Wow. So that's just our way of bringing as much value as possible, bringing these useful products to people in Australia as much as possible. Um, and it's going well. We've had good pickup. Um, people subscribing, people joining, people are yep. learning more about nootropics. And yeah, it's a really exciting time for us. Yeah, sounds good, man. No, I love how like you've partnered with some like influential new tropics companies and just providing like a complete solution for someone. So it's pretty good, man. Like I think no other yeah. company does that. So definitely, um, uh, well done, man. So, um, so guys, I'll link, um, I think I've linked it in a couple of newsletters ago, but I'll do it again. And I think pick, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Philip, but uh, Philip had Neuro the guys at Neurotech have kindly offered a discount code, um, yep. to all the head honcho newsletter, uh, subscribers so i'll send it out tomorrow um i really really want you guys to try and um enhance um and see how you go with it especially during these times everyone's stressed um definitely need a, a bit of a boost would you add anything else to that philip perfect no yeah no i appreciate it happy to give your audience your customers uh we'll give you like 20 percent off cool enhance or if you want to subscribe to our working from home subscription feel free to do that as well um yeah yeah we'll give you guys the code Okay, I'll, well, let's, I'll set up a code. Yeah. Let's go head on show 20 for Done. 20% off. Sounds good, man. And I'll, I'll send it out in the newsletter. And guys, subscribe to, um, if you haven't already, Neurotech's um, working from home. You also get 20% off. Is that correct, Philip, of head on show products as well? So um, That's right, yeah. And then discounts on three other brands as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think I met the guy, um, Mark Curry from... Savvy Beverages, he's doing some great stuff as well. So you definitely have exclusive access to that product as well and iRise as well. So that's that's awesome. And it's also the, the glasses, which are, uh, I think, the blue light blockers, correct? Yeah, or? Barclay Eyewear, they do these cool blue light blockers. Yeah, cool. So they're an Australian-based company and um, they have inter interchangeable lenses and these yeah. really, really nice frames. So awesome. great, great product, great company. Awesome. There you guys have it, um, full of value. So thanks, Philip. Let's wrap it up, man. I really appreciate you being on the show, um, giving a lot of knowledge and value to our audience. Hopefully they get a bit of insight about nootropics and all that kind of stuff. And guys, um, if you haven't already, uh, follow Neurotech on Instagram. So Philip, where can um, the um, audience find you on social media? Yeah, so find us on Instagram at Neurotech or Facebook or at Neurotech. Yeah, visit our website, neurotech.com.au. Check us out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. I will respond to anything and everything at all times. <laughs> um, and yeah, awesome. I really appreciate you having me on. And it's it's been good to chat, man. I can't wait to keep doing this with you. Yeah, likewise, man. Always love to talk about new topics with the man himself. Um, guys, also, I'll link all the Philips and Neurotex information down below so you guys can check them out. And and also, again, um, sending out everything in the newsletter tomorrow. So, guys, thank you for tuning in. Also, thank you, Philip, mate. Um, Thanks, guys. Thank you.